This week on Vaticano, the Universal Church begins the first phase of the Senado process. Hear the news about the upcoming World Meeting of Families and celebrate the month of the Holy Rosary with us. Also, uncover the connection between Raphael and Fra Bartolomeo by visiting the first special exhibition in the Vatican Museums in almost two years. For this and more, Vaticano starts now. The Holy Father urged young climate activists to foster harmony between mankind and nature in a video message for the Youth for Climate event in Milan. We are not enemies. We are not indifferent. We are part of this cosmic harmony. This fraternal harmony, Pope Francis said, is essential to overcoming fragmentation and division and creating a more united future. Youth for Climate is dedicated to encouraging and supporting young climate leaders and promoting the future generation's climate action. <laughs> to signal the start of the 27th Assembly of the Pontifical Academy for Life, the Holy Father warned against the current throwaway culture and its effects. The everyday thrown away, that life is thrown away. Let us be careful about this throwaway culture. It is not a problem of one law or another, it is a problem of throwing away. This is a path which we cannot take, the throwaway path. Pope Francis closed his address by encouraging the assembly to remember that science should be in the service of man, and not man in service of science. The 10th World Meeting of Families will take place in Rome in June of 2022. The theme of the meeting will be family love, vocation, and way of holiness. Considering the emergency situation regarding the COVID-19 virus, the organizers announced during a press conference in the Vatican that the World Meeting of Families will consist of hybrid in-person, online, and diocesan events. Vicar General of the Diocese of Rome, Cardinal Angelo De Donatis, sees it as an opportunity to reach more families worldwide through the Internet. And he says that this meeting is important for the European demographic situation. I think of Europe and how much of a need there is to walk this path of life because this demographic winter will have to pass. During the press conference, the Cardinal said that bishops are encouraged to organize their own local events, parallel with those happening in Rome. The official hymn of the 10th World Meeting of Families is We Believe in Love, and was unveiled during the press conference. After being adjourned following a week of hearings, the largest trial for financial crimes in the Vatican was reopened on October the 5th. The defendant, Cardinal Angelo Becciu, is the former prefect of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints. The accusations of embezzlement and misuse of office go back to when the Cardinal held the role of substitute for general affairs in the Secretariat of State of the Holy See. Il Papa. In an interview with Spain's Cope radio station, Pope Francis wished that the trial would turn out well for Cardinal Angelo Becciu. The Universal Church begins the initial phase of the synodal process on October the 9th. The first phase is geared towards synodality on the local level, in parishes, schools, homes, and lay movements. It calls the faithful in these walks of life to come together to determine the best means of creating synodality in their communities. 
As the upcoming synod is focused on the term synodality itself, the process centers on answering two important questions. How does this journeying together take place on different levels, from the local level to the universal one, allowing the church to proclaim the gospel? And what steps is the Spirit inviting us to take in order to grow as a synodal church? In April this year, the Holy Father encouraged all the faithful to partake in a personal and communal conversion on this synodal journey. This synodal process is a means of bringing the people of God together in the life and mission of the church and serves as a reminder that everyone has a role to play in the church. This October marks the first anniversary of the release of Pope Francis' encyclical letter on fraternity and social friendship, called Fratelli Tutti. Invitation is uh, made very concrete. Cardinal Michael Cherney, Undersecretary of the Section for Migrants of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, invites all people to discover this encyclical letter and says that it's an important document that contributes to peace and solidarity. Uh, Fratelli Tutti invites uh, all of us uh, to brother and sisterhood and social friendship. That is to recognize uh, that we are indeed brothers and sisters and therefore need to treat each other as brothers and sisters. Among those whom we uh, tend to overlook, uh, and not even see or purposefully neglect, are the vulnerable migrants, the people on the run, uh, the people who have come here and are serving us from the underground, who have no rights or uh, whose uh, access to social services are very limited, who have uh, problems with their documents and so on and so on. And so uh, indeed this year in our, in our uh, celebration of the World Day of Migrants and Refugees on the last uh, Sunday of September, the theme was towards an ever wider we. And towards the never wider we is implementing the central message of Fratelli Tutti, applying it in a, in a special way or in a focused way, explicit way, to the vulnerable people on the move in our midst, those who are uh, in our society or passing through our society whom we tend not to see and who uh, are just as much brothers and sisters as the people that we live with and grow up with. And so the invitation is uh, made very concrete when uh, the stranger uh, is knocking on our door because as we learn from the gospel, the stranger is Jesus. And if we welcome the stranger, we welcome him. When we return, meet Father Salvatore Perella, a leading Mariologist, as he illuminates Our Lady's integral connection to the Holy Eucharist. Santa Maria, Mãe de Deus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Ave Maria, piena di grazia, il Signore è con te. Tu sei benedetta fra le donne, e benedetto è il frutto del tuo seno, Gesù. The month of October is traditionally dedicated to the Rosary, since the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary is celebrated on October the 7th. Pope St. Pius V introduced this feast day, previously known as Our Lady of Victory. 
commemorate the victory on October the 7th, 1571 of the Christian forces in the Battle of Lepanto against the Ottoman Empire. Before the battle, Pope St. Pius V called all of Christendom to join him in praying the rosary to defeat the Islamic threat. With the Christians being victorious, the Holy Father attributed the victory to the power of the rosary. Father Salvatore Perella, Mariologist and President of the Pontifical Faculty of Marianum, explains the role of Mary's powerful intercession and its ties to another powerful tool for our salvation, the Eucharist. What is the relationship between the Eucharist and Mary? I can only allude to this beautiful phrase, a hymn by Thomas Aquinas, Ave Verum Corpus Natum de Maria Vergine. So we can say, to make ourselves understood, that between Jesus and Mary, under the sacramental aspect of the Eucharist, there is a closeness. We say remote, because the body of Christ that is made such, through the phrase, do these in memory of me, is remotely the same body generated by the Spirit and by Mary, and that Mary carried in her womb, then gave birth to it, nursed it, nourished it, served it, and that she was the one who gave birth to it. Father Perella says that there's an indissoluble relationship between Mary and the Holy Trinity through the communion of saints. She relives and teaches us about the mysteries of communion and salvation found in the Eucharist. L'Eucaristia è sacramento di comunione, certamente sì. Is the Eucharist a sacrament of communion? And is Mary an icon of communion? Certainly, yes. It is enough to see this small, apparent and insignificant text from Acts 114 that attests and passes on to us the presence of Mary in the upper room. Certainly, one could say, Christ is no more. Christ was dead. He rose again. He ascended to heaven. But we must not forget that Jesus left us Christians with a duty, the duty to remember him. Do this in memory of me. Every time you eat, every time you drink of my body and blood, I'm with you. Pope St. John Paul II argued that Mary, as the mother of God, helps us to understand the paradox found within the Eucharist. Christ is dead, but Christ is also risen from the dead. She makes it possible for us to see Christ present in the Eucharist and in our everyday lives. The Eucharist is also said to be a drug of immortality. What does drug of immortality mean? Medicine? Certainly, yes. The Eucharist heals our bodies nourishes our bodies, makes us like Christ despite the fact that we are sinners. Everyone, Jesus found sinners, who he then makes in the daily sacraments in the Gospel, justified, therefore forgiven and therefore made righteous. And who is Mary if not the first being justified? We say this when we affirm that Mary was conceived without the stain of sin. And what is this if not the epiphany of God's love? God is greater than sin. Dio è più grande del peccato. Father Perella believes Mary is a clear Eucharistic icon because of her yes to God to partake in all of Christ's life, his missionary life and his sufferings. Mary's yes led her to become the new tabernacle.
Maria, in che modo è tabernacolo? In what way is Mary a tabernacolo? In the first way, it is that of a virginal motherhood. Mary, preserved in her body, in her womb, for nine months, the Son of the Most High. She opened him up to everyone, so that from this living tabernacle, that is Mary, we too could enjoy the Eucharistic food, which is the person of Christ. Therefore, Mary is Christ's midwife. She is the midwife of the faith of believers. That is, Mary makes Christ, who is us, open up. This is Mary's work. This is her diagonia. Generate with her example and with her prayer the Christ who is us. Generare con il suo esempio e con la sua preghiera il Cristo che è in noi. Father Perella believes that Mary's strong faith inspires us to make our Amen the yes to the mystery of Christ's presence in the holy sacrifice of the altar. And through her intercession, we too can become little tabernacles, ready to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. After the break, we head to the Vatican Museums to see the patrons of Rome through the brushstrokes of two great artists of the Renaissance, Raphael and Fra Bartolomeo. The Vatican Museums have inaugurated the first special exhibition in almost two years due to COVID-19 pandemic restrictions. It's a day of joy. It's a day of um, restarting and uh, I'm very, very happy uh, to uh, finally have the possibility to, to inaugurate this exhibition. Director of the Vatican Museums, Barbara Yatta, explains that the Saints Peter and Paul by Raphael and Fra Bartolomeo exhibition is a way to conclude celebrations of the 500th Jubilee of Raphael and underline the strong ties between Rome and Florence. One of the most important artists... Eike Schmidt, director of the Uffizi Galleries in Florence, says the exhibition is a time machine that allows visitors to travel 500 years into the past and step into Fra Bartolomeo's and Raphael's studios. It's truly amazing to have these two cartoons next to the painting, the very first time uh, since the winter of 1513-1514, so more than half a millennium ago, that these four works of art are being brought together in one room. But moreover, since they are clean, since they're conserved, we can really see them um, in a way that uh, would never have been possible in the recent decades or centuries. Fra Bartolomeo was able to finish his painting of St. Paul, but because of an artistic crisis, he never finished the St. Peter piece. The research done during the restoration confirmed that Raphael finished his friend's commission of the figure of St. Peter. And you don't have to really know a lot about Raphael's or Fra Bartomeu's style. You just have to have open eyes uh, in order to really observe what's the same, what's different. Just comparing the cartoon with the final painting, you will be able to see and you will become an expert without reading long uh, texts and long books, uh, just by looking very, very carefully. So um, in the face of St. Peter, in fact, if you look especially at the faces and you will see how um, the cartoon is being 
uh, transferred uh, and transformed into something else. And here we do have the ultimate proof that what the written sources tell us, in fact, that um, Raphael finished uh, the painting, is actually fully borne out by their visual characteristics. It's a tiny but very, very important and precious exhibition. Important in many aspects, not only the devotion side. They are the Prince of Apostles, uh, the patrons of Rome, Peter and Paul, that uh, uh, are kept generally in, in the apartment of the audience of popes. And uh, for that reason, it's very, very difficult to see. The, the general public cannot see them. And so we thought uh, uh, it was nice to share uh, these very, very important paintings with a more wide public in occasion of the celebrations of Raphael. The in-depth studies of the paintings fully confirm the double authorship and hence the deep artistic friendship between Raphael and Fra Bartolomeo. Visitors can admire the newly restored masterpieces thanks to the donation of the New York chapter of the Patrons of the Arts of the Vatican Museums and for the first time in 500 years can see the complete process of creating these masterpieces from drawings and preparatory cartoons to paintings.